tell us about the conclusion the coroner reached? Um, so the coroner reached that it was um, an accident, um, possibly a prank that's gone wrong. Um, something that isn't uncommon for boys, especially teenage or approaching teenage years. Boys to do, you know, they know right from wrong, they know that they shouldn't be doing things, but why do they do it? There is no reason why they do it. Um, they just do it. That was actually what the coroner said. That was just your boy much. being a 12 year old, you think? Just being a 12 year old little boy. What did you learn? Did you learn anything about your son that you didn't know through the, the coroner's summing up? The bullying, Archie being bullied was, it was a massive shock to me. Because Archie always told me everything yeah. and I still feel if it was if it was getting to him to the level that he was worried or concerned, I do think that even if he didn't tell me, he would have told his brother. But had that support been in place at senior school, again, that trusted person, Archie might have been able to tell that, that person that he was being bullied um, and talked to, but he didn't have that trusted person. But you don't believe he took his own life? That's definitely not, never. Why is it definitely not? I know my child, 100%, never. It's just, uh, he's, he loved life and he, he had his plans for a future. Uh, the messages between him and his friends, sort of like the last few weeks between each other, talking about when they're famous, they're going to do this and they're going to buy a, this person a car and this person a house and I'm going to wear this tracksuit and these shorts and yeah. everything was positive. What went wrong? Was he showing off? Was he parading I've got, himself? I've got my no, no. I've got my views on what I think happened that day. I've gone over and over and over in my head, and I think he's climbed the banister in the hallway, and I think he's put this this dressing gown over his head the night before he was playing with the dressing gown in his sister's room. He put it on his forehead and tied it to Lily's feet. Yeah. This is his um, Lauren's half sister and then to the door handle, opening and closing the door handle. Um, and when Lily asked him what he was doing, he just said, I don't know, I'm just bored. And I think because I removed him from school on the 30th of March, because the support wasn't in place and I was, I was concerned because things were starting to be highlighted. And for the first time in seven months, and Archie won't, he wasn't getting his support. He's gone from 32.5 32 hours one-to-one -one support yeah. to 15 minutes at dinner time. The transition is the hardest part for Archie. Yeah. He doesn't cope with change. So I removed him from the school and called for an education meeting um, to see why the support wasn't in place. And I just think that he was bored. You know, like the lockdown. You know, there was a couple of messages um, where Archie and his friends, you know, um, said about being depressed, you know, which, yes, the whole word depressed is concerning, but I think kids use that word very easy yeah. these days, you know, I'm bare depressed, this is how they'll talk. Um, looking at the messages between him and his friend, his friend saying, yeah, same, and this was in the lockdown. Now, for Archie to go from being so full of energy and channeling that energy out into all Archie's hobbies to nothing because we're on lockdown. Of course you're going to get a child that's not his normal self, you know, but to the point where he would consider taking his life, definitely not, you know. The only thing I could do is obviously take him out for walks then, you know, to burn some energy, but, and I think... I know talking to you you know, how committed you were to Archie, how much you cared, how much you wanted to make a, a difference. But I'm sure you examine yourself and, and what you did and what you didn't do. Of course I do. I've absolutely ripped myself apart. Nobody could judge me more than I judge myself. I've, mm. I've been through everything I could possibly... Could I have done this different? Could I have done that different? Even though she's one to one teacher at his primary school, she feels the same. She, yeah. She's ripped herself apart, you know. Had I've only gone up to the school with him, 
you know, I think all of us, his sister, you know, just, all of us have ripped ourselves apart. What could we have done different? That I am pushing for the Archie's Army Law. Um, my MP has um, now proceeded forward with um, the letter to Steve Barclay, because we was promised a meeting back in July. So we're going to now move, now the inquest is over, we're going to move forward with that. How much do you miss him? I feel lost. Like my heart has been ripped out. He, it's literally the heart of my family. My home don't feel the same. It just feels cold and empty. Just nothing's, nothing's ever going to be the same again. And if I can avoid this, whether it be via pushing for the SEN and the support within school, because I, I strongly believe I fought a four year, which a lot of people don't know. These people that go on about, oh, she should have supported him more. They haven't got a clue, they don't know me. I spent four years already fighting the system to get Archie's education on track and get him into a mainstream school because he wasn't getting the support. His education healthcare plan was formed over a two week period of when me and Archie's dad split up and all that little boy needed was nurture and support within the school and he was failed. I spent four years fighting that and won that in court and got him into mainstream school and that little boy proved everybody wrong. And his last headmaster at the inquest described Archie's a success story and that's how I want Archie remembered, not from the label that he was given when he was five years old. I worked so hard with that little boy and I think that there's so many children and parents that are fighting to get their kids the support in school. I know so many that are fighting to get their kids the support in school. It's just not there. And this is where these kids' lives can be turned around, you know, rather than leave them and then they just become a problem to society when they're older. They can be helped. Well, good luck to you and what you're trying to achieve and in memory of your little boy. And uh, he'll live on through all that you achieve. Holly, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.